I have a new video for you guys because we're taking a deep dive into the downfall of Ellen DeGeneres. Her show has recently been canceled after months of accusations and investigations. It's clear that there was a toxic work environment on set and Ellen is to blame for this. She's also responsible for the three creepy producers who were forced to leave her show after being exposed for inappropriate behavior. Today we're breaking down everything that Ellen has done wrong that has led to her show's cancellation. So let's get into it. If you guys don't know who Ellen DeGeneres is, she's a 63-year-old entertainer who was born in Louisiana. Even though she's been a comedian her entire life, she hasn't always been famous. She actually went to the University of New Orleans where she briefly studied communications before getting into the entertainment industry. So Ellen has been around forever, but these last few years she's been getting called out and there's a few reasons why. One of those is because she's being accused of being rude to so many people, not only celebrities but her own employees and hosting a very toxic work environment. Along with that come some creepy producers who she has been enabling for years now. Thankfully these three guys are out the door but she has allowed them to take advantage of her employees and at the end of the day she protects the bad guys. And even though it would be very convenient for Ellen to blame everything on those three creepy producers, she still needs to take accountability for her part in everything. So today we're going to walk through a bunch of receipts and evidence to show that Ellen isn't the kind woman she tries to play herself out to be. And I understand that it's going to be difficult for some people to accept that Ellen isn't this great person because I think back to her show and all the kind things that she has done for normal people like you and I or how Obama literally awarded her the Medal of Freedom, which you would think that he would pick someone who is honest and moral and trustworthy, but it doesn't seem like Ellen is any of those things. This is going to be a long video, guys, so buckle in. And before we get into everything, I want to start off with a twist. Twitter thread from Kevin T. Porter. This man tweeted out that if you've had an insane story with Ellen being mean, that he will match $2 to the LA food bank. Which is great. I mean, he's trying to give back to the homeless people. And at the same time, we're going to see stories from people who have interacted with Ellen. So this tweet ended up going viral and thousands and thousands of people replied. This woman named Danielle actually shared when she was 15 years old, she created a mock-up of Ellen's head, like a paper mache prop type thing. And she sent it to the show with a letter, but the show ended up using it as a prop and like put some money under it and gave it to a fan of the show. So they never even acknowledged Danielle's work. They just saw it in the mail and was like, hold up, we can use this for a bit and just stole it from her. Also, who would want this paper mache with $500 under? I mean, you know that person probably ripped off the $500 and tossed the mache, which I'm sorry, Danielle, because Ellen should have appreciated that, but she didn't. This woman named Chris shared that she actually served Ellen and her wife, Portia. If you guys didn't know, Ellen is married to her beautiful wife, Portia, who is a model. So they were out to eat. And guess what Ellen did to this waitress? Well, I guess Ellen noticed that this woman had a chipped nail polish on her hand. Nothing that got on the plate, but was just, you know, chipped nail polish. I mean, she's a waitress. She's bouncing back and forth. Her nails are bound to chip and whoever keeps their nails like perfectly painted. Well, Ellen actually called the restaurant and complained to their boss and almost had this server fired. I've heard that Ellen is a germaphobe, but how are you going to try to get this waitress fired over her nail polish. Like I would understand maybe if it was in your pasta dish, it was on your plate, but it wasn't anywhere near her. Ellen just didn't like it and wanted her out of there. This hairdresser, Allison Freer, actually replied back to Kevin T. Porter's tweet and she shared that she was working on a show for Warner Brothers and they were having a special birthday. So they had some steaks outside. They were grilling for some fancy lunch. Well, Ellen actually sent someone over to their celebration and demanded they stop cooking because she doesn't eat meat. So Ellen smelt some meat cooking outside. She told someone to go out there and stop it because she doesn't like it. And supposedly you would hear throughout this video that she's got a very sensitive nose, which that sounds like a you problem, Ellen. If you have a sensitive nose, you should probably just keep that to yourself. 
Allison also shared that Ellen polices her crew's lunch. Nobody is allowed to eat fish or anything. They would come and hide on our stage, the show that Allison was working on, so they can eat what they wanted to away from her. Okay, if that's not Toxic 101, I mean, imagine I have issues with eating, so for my boss to tell me, oh, you can't eat that. It's like, then what am I going to eat? I'm so picky. Like, I have to eat this. So weird behavior from Ellen. Speaking of her sensitive nose, this man Benjamin shared that Ellen does in fact have a sensitive nose. So everyone who chews gum must spit out their gum before coming into her office to speak to her. And if she thinks that you smell that day, you have to go home and shower. He replied back to his own tweet and shared, A new staff member was told every day she picks someone different to really hate. It's not your fault. Just suck it up for the day and she'll be mean to someone else the next day. They didn't believe it, but it ended up being entirely true. Which, who does Ellen think that she is? I mean, I guess she's Ellen DeGeneres, but who does she think she is to just pick someone to hate on that day? I mean, she seems like a truly miserable person who is trying to shift her negativity and her misery onto other people who are just enjoying and living their lives. Again, the sensitive nose, like, that's that sounds like an Ellen problem, not anyone else's. We've also heard that Ellen is really bizarre when it comes to eye contact. And actually, this man is an English singer named Callum, and he has had a bizarre interaction with Ellen. During an interview, Callum shared while on the Ellen show, he was backstage and the stage manager was walking with him right as he was about to go out. And the stage manager told him, yeah, it's amazing you get to do this, but remember not to look into Ellen's eyes. Everything else is fine, just don't look into her eyes. What in the Medusa is going on? Like, why can't you look into her eyes? I felt like that is something very weird to me, and it makes me truly believe that Ellen thinks that she's way above everyone else. Like, don't even look at me in my eyes because you are a peasant. Like, ew. That freaks me out. But Callum hasn't been the only person to report that Ellen does not like eye contact because this man named Neil Breen is an Australian radio host and he was actually instructed while working on the Ellen show to not look at her in the eyes. He was also told not to talk to her. Don't look at her. Don't talk to her. Neil claims that he and his team were given very specific instructions and rules to follow while on the show, and they were all at Ellen's request. Throughout this video, you're going to be hearing from a woman named Hedda Muscat. She's actually a former producer from The Ellen Show, and she has gone on several interviews and podcasts to share about the toxic work environment that happened on set. And this next bit you're going to hear, she explains that she also has heard that Ellen doesn't like eye contact. Also, Ellen was just a toxic person to be around in general. She was toxic to be around. That's right. how I would frame it. Yeah. Uh, because she wouldn't look at you in the eye. She was very dismissive. Early on when I would pitch my segments and I would just open my mouth, I'm not even five seconds into my pitch. She would say, get to the point already. Get to the point. Come on, get to the point. You guys are going to hear from Hedda throughout this whole video, so we'll come back to her. But let's talk about another one of Ellen's employees who's also acknowledged her very toxic work environment. So this man was a DJ on The Ellen Show from 2003 to 2013. And he claims while he's grateful for the opportunity to work on this show, he did experience and feel the toxicity of the environment and he stands with his former colleagues in their request to create a healthier and more inclusive workplace for the show. I feel like that guy was always all smiles on camera, so to hear that he also felt that energy makes me believe it. And I just feel like Ellen is a very privileged and self-centered person. I mean, at one time, she called Steve Jobs to complain about the iPhone to him. Like, who does she think she is to call up Steve Jobs and complain about iPhones? So allegedly, Ellen misplaced her reading glasses, and she thought the next best option would be to call up Steve Jobs and to complain about the text size on the phone. She, quote, stopped everything and made a call. Next thing we know, we literally hear Steve Jobs pick up and say, hi, Ellen. And then Ellen told him the iPhone should have bigger font, the producer said. That's her, quote, the former producer continued. It's not that she's some demon. She just lives in an incredibly privileged bubble and is out of touch with the real world. 
And that seems to be true because Ellen does act like she's in her own world and I feel like everyone around her is just an inconvenience. In 2014, she attended the Oscars with her wife and there was a bodyguard hired for her named Tom. And he claims that she, Ellen, was so rude. He told the magazine that Ellen's wife, Portia, was incredibly kind and he actually connected with her first before he was introduced to Ellen and then everything went downhill. He said, Ellen pretty much just gave me a side glance out of her eye and didn't even say hello or thank you for protecting my mother, my wife, and me. Adding, it was very cold and it was very sly and actually it was kind of demeaning in the way that she treats people other than those who are in her circle. So it seems like if you're not a celebrity, you're going to be treated like crap by Ellen. But it's not just former producers, employees, um, bodyguards, but also YouTubers have come out and spoken against Ellen. You guys may remember that Nikki Tutorials actually went on Ellen's show after she came out as transgender, which I thought was really great. I was like, holy crap, she's going on Ellen. She's a YouTuber. This is huge. And even though it was a decent interview, we found out afterwards that Nikki didn't have a great time. So Nikki actually exposed the Ellen show while she was on a Dutch television show. And she went there and she was first talking about the comparison between this show and the Ellen show, how much better she was treated being at this Dutch show. She described the Ellen show as being a different world. She agreed that it was more cold and distant. She also went on to share that when she was at the show, she had nowhere to go to the bathroom because every guest except for Nikki, was given their own private bathroom. And actually the bathroom I guess she was supposed to be using was being reserved for the Jonas Brothers, which that's not cool. But honestly, that's not the worst part of it all. I think it's pretty bad that Nikki just never even got a greeting from Ellen at all. I mean, I understand if the bathrooms are all filled up and such. <laughs> Obviously, it's really inconvenient. I feel like if Nikki was a bigger celebrity, Ellen would have, you know, accommodated. But also, Ellen just never took the time to go and greet Nikki or to welcome her. Her or anything like that. But Nikki has been very mature about the situation. She just hopes that Ellen has been made aware of what's going on and maybe she can make it better if she wants to. I'm pretty sure that Ellen did get Nikki's message, but she had no plans to change anything. Nikki shared that a close source of Ellen's spoke to US Weekly and she wasn't really worried about her career ending. She quote said that Ellen's been in our homes for so long. It'll take a lot more than a bodyguard and a blogger to change how people feel about her. So Ellen knows what that 2014 year old bodyguard said about her and she also knows how Nikki feels, but she doesn't think that anything is going to change. Before we get into the major things that have happened behind scenes at this show, including those horrible three producers, I want to remind you guys that another YouTuber, Trisha Paytas, has also been on Ellen's show and she got some bizarre instructions as well. So Trisha went on the Ellen show to read really fast from a book as a talent, but before going on stage, she was actually instructed by one of the producers to not touch Ellen. It wasn't just a don't look at Ellen, it was a don't look and don't even touch Ellen. But of course, you guys know Trisha Paytas, she's always doing her own thing and she touched Ellen and she felt her whole soul drop in that moment because she remembered that she was just told before going out there, don't touch Ellen. Which is such a bizarre thing to tell a talent or a singer or someone before they go out on stage. Like, I feel like you should tell them while you're booking the event so they can really get into their mind to stay far away from you. All right. Kanye, you. <laughs> you're so happy, aren't you? You're so pretty. It's uh, like looking at a mirror. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, it's your funny out of your body. I'm really happy. Wow. You're fantastic. All right. Um, you're going to read really fast. Now we're getting to the very serious part of this video. So here is your trigger warning now because we're going to be talking about three producers from The Ellen Show who were taking advantage of people behind the scenes and Ellen enabled them. BuzzFeed actually did an investigation where they spoke to 36 former employees who all claim they have experienced some type of incident involving SA or something that made them uncomfortable. A former Warner Brothers employee who worked at the Ellen show said that the company turns a blind eye to the misconduct because the series, The Ellen Show, is a cash cow. But after BuzzFeed did their reporting and their investigation, there's no way that Warner Brothers can ignore the claims that they have published. First off, let's talk about Kevin Lehman because he is a former producer to the show. One ex-employee claims that Kevin one day asked him if he could give Kevin a hand 
job or perform something on him, you know, in his manly area in the bathroom at a company party in 2013. Another person claims that they saw Lehman grab a production assistant's private parts. So hold up, those are already two really awful things that this man has done, but it gets so much worse. In May 2017, another employee claims that she saw Kevin grab a production assistant in a car and kiss his neck. If you guys do not realize by now, Kevin is gay, so he likes the male staffers. And nearly a dozen former employees called out Kevin for pointing out people's body parts, kind of like their bulges or their crotches, and he would ask his employees, are you a top or a bottom? Maybe Kevin's trying to be sarcastic by asking about those things, but it doesn't change that he is bringing attention to his employees' private parts and then asking them, oh, you're a top or bottom or this or that. Are you trying to hook up with them? I mean, I feel like that's already such a violation of the power dynamic in the workplace that this man should have known better. They claim that many of his targets were lower level and younger employees who felt like they lacked any power to speak up. This employee also claims that Kevin would do these things in front of 10 people at a time, uh, grab someone or make a disgusting comment, but everyone would just let it slide because it's just Kevin being Kevin, which is never acceptable. Kevin has made a statement and pretty much denied everything, claiming they were just bad jokes, which none of those things we just described were bad jokes, so he needs a better excuse. Another one of those toxic producers that Ellen was enabling behind the scenes was Ed Galvin, and I truly feel like this guy was Ellen's favorite. He was one of the first producers hired at the show, and he really left his mark on many employees. BuzzFeed reported that five former employees said that the executive producer, Ed, touched them in ways that made them uncomfortable, whether he was rubbing their shoulders or their back or, you know, placing his hand around their lower waist. Dozens of other former employees claimed that Galvin had a reputation for being handsy with women, especially in the control room. If you guys didn't know, the control room is pretty much the area at the show where all the technology is being housed. It's where those camera people, the mic people, some producers, people will hang out while the show is being filmed, and that's a space where Ed would thrive. One employee claims that you could definitely see the creep factor and the creepy touching. That was out in the open for everyone to see. Obviously, no one wants that, and no one wants to be uncomfortably touched by someone, but you didn't want to piss them off either because you would be fired. So it was just a culture of fear. Another former employee claims that Galvin would call over producers and assistants to sit near them when the show was filming segments they had to work on and in front of nearly 30 other people in the control room would touch them inappropriately. So this man had no shame and he obviously felt very in control and comfortable taking advantage of people in this environment, which his big boss, Ellen, allowed him to do. BuzzFeed reported that 47 former employees claimed that Galvin led with intimidation and fear on a daily basis. One former employee said when they turned in their notice, Galvin flipped over a table and chair while screaming. Imagine trying to quit your job because it's so incredibly toxic and then your boss like flips out and you're like, okay, well, this is why I'm leaving, dude. This part is incredibly creepy because five former employees also said they saw Mr. Ed Galvin use a button at his desk to remotely shut his office door as an intimidation tactic during reprimands. One employee said it seemed like a power move more than anything, which should not be happening. Just because this guy is the boss does not mean that he can go and hit a button on his desk and close the door and scare people. It makes me think of Matt Lawyer and how he at one point had a button in his room that he would close and lock the door and would then do things to women employees that he worked with, some colleagues. So this man obviously has no respect for any of his employees, staffers, colleagues. Actually, our friend Hedda Muscat, who again used to work at Ellen's show, shared in a podcast that she witnessed Ed just freaking out on everyone. When they hired the executive producer, Ed Glavin, to work closely with Ellen, it created already a, a culture of fear. Um, Ed was a yeller. Ellen knew about it. He would yell in front of us and her in a room. He would just be going off on people with veins bulging. But it doesn't seem like that was the only time that Ed went off on his employees because Hedda shared a time where Ed just went off on the employees. His whole face turned red and everyone was stunned. 
She was waiting for Ellen to say something like, whoa, Ed, don't talk like that. But in fact, Ellen did something very different. She giggled and crossed her legs up on the chair and said, well, I guess every production needs their dog. And from then we knew Ed was going to be the barking dog, her dog. We were in our production meetings and she would watch Ed go off on people. Ellen would look at Ed and she would laugh because I was hoping she was going to say, Ed, you can't be yelling at crew this way. You can't be yelling at people this way. She laughed and she said every production needs their dog. So I fully believe that Ellen knew what Ed was up to, how he got his work done, and she was totally fine with him being inappropriate and rude and just mean to everyone. This guy also did creepy things like showering in his office bathroom with the door open. So employees would walk into the room, the shower door would be open, and they would be taking a meeting with Ed with his hair all wet. It's just so inappropriate. So that was the second creepy producer, and for the third, we've got Jonathan Norman. Jonathan is another executive producer, and he's actually being accused of manipulating young employees into liking him or doing things for him. Obviously, we cannot use the term G-R-O-O-M, you know, that one right there, but that's what he's being accused of. Jonathan is also gay, and he's being accused of taking out a younger employee to concerts and giving them work-related perks, and then one night actually trying to perform stuff on his, you know, private parts. Ugh. And three former employees actually corroborated that this incident went down and the employee who was taken advantage of by Jonathan confirmed that this went down and that Jonathan tried to do things to him and it was bizarre. Obviously this guy who's in a position of power shouldn't be trying to give work perks to this younger guy that he's trying to impress. That is manipulation. Hollywood manipulation at its finest. But Jonathan Norman 100% denies these allegations and claims that there was nothing that went down during his time at the Ellen Show. Obviously, I don't know this man personally, so I can't be like, oh, he's lying. But I do believe that he did something wrong because he has been grouped in with these two other producers who have been proven to take advantage of these people. And I believe all of those who spoke to BuzzFeed because I don't think BuzzFeed plays. But some former employees believe that Ellen shouldn't be connected to these creepy producers because she had no idea. She was just there to show up, be on stage, to smile, and to be kind. But I really don't believe that's the truth either. Former employees say that Ellen just doesn't spend enough time on set to understand the culture. Quote, everyone acted really differently around her. There's a show happening behind the show. The show the executive producers have us all put on for her when she comes to the office. I totally believe that. I have a good feeling that those producers would tell the employees, like, hold up, Ellen's coming. Like, everyone spit out their gum. Like, stop eating meat. Like, we all need to stand still and have no personality and make no eye contact because the queen is coming here. But I don't really believe that Ellen didn't understand the strong sense of culture. I mean, let's go back to our good friend Hedda Mescrat, who used to work as part of the Ellen show and she believes that Ellen knows about everything going on. This is what people have to understand about Ellen. Ellen was the executive producer of the show. There are many shows where the host is just the hired hand, and then you give them a pass. They have no clue what's going on behind the scenes. As an executive producer on the show, she's the one who made all the rules. These were her rules that Ed was following. After BuzzFeed did their investigation, Warner Brothers could no longer deny that there were some sketchy things going on at the Ellen show, so those three producers were let go. Ellen actually held a video conference with over 200 staffers where she apologized to them. She claims that she wasn't perfect and she's going to learn from her mistakes. I'm sorry it's super blurry, but this is actually a screenshot from the transcript of her conference with her employees. She said, reading the allegations about the atmosphere on the show was heartbreaking. Please talk to me. Look me in the eyes. Crazy. Just not true. I don't know how it started. Not who I am. People here know that I did not ask people to not look at me in the eyes on set. Which I don't know why she's so bothered by that one because I feel like it's true. Like, why are you being so defensive? Because so many people have now said that you, they were told not to make eye contact with you. In that same speech, she also announced that they've got a new executive producer replacing Kevin, Ed, and Jonathan. While all this was going down, Ellen did actually post an apology video online. And it's kind of awkward and blurry. But there's one part she brought up where she says there's been <laughs> going on. I'm going to have to bleep out the word, but let me go ahead and play it for you guys. 
I'm just so sorry. This has gone on way, 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 way too long. People have gotten away with murder. And that's what's happening. So that was Ellen's first apology. And I don't know what she meant by like, like there's the M word going on around here. I hope there's not. We've talked about some really awful things, but none of them were, you know, people losing their lives. Ellen has made several apologies since all of this has gone down. One of them was actually in her home during COVID time. And this is when she announced that Steven will be a new producer for the show. Hey everybody. Things are changing every minute. I've tried to use my platform to raise awareness. I like to think that I'm doing my best, but I think it's time that we have to look at ourselves and we have to say we have not done enough. I was the dancing lady for a little while, and now I want to help educate my audience. I want to educate myself. I do you guys remember when Ellen started shooting her show from home? She claimed that her house felt like a prison, which is so bizarre to me because she's in a beautiful mansion and her designer sweats. It's like, what prison did you go to? One thing that I've learned from being in quarantine, this, this is like being in jail, mostly because I've been wearing the same clothes for 10 days and everyone in here is gay. But if you're wondering how Ellen treated her employees during COVID, I've got an answer for you guys. So none of the crew members heard from show executives or Ellen about their pay or working hours during the pandemic. It doesn't look like those employees were being paid. Variety actually spoke to two sources who claim that more than 30 employees haven't heard anything about their working status or their pay. Can you imagine during a time where we have a global pandemic, Ellen cuts off her employees and takes away their health care? That's Ellen energy right there. That's Ellen energy for you. Actually, this man named Brad Garrett, who has been on Ellen's show several times, tweeted out after she apologized for those three producers. He tagged her in a tweet and wrote, sorry, but it comes from the top. And he also said, he knows more than one who was treated horribly by her. It's common knowledge that she's awful. And again, he's been on the show six times, so he definitely knows. So Ellen did apologize for a third time when they launched the show again, and I just feel like her apology is so disingenuous. Oh boy, welcome to season 18 of the Ellen DeGeneres Show. If you're watching because you love me, thank you. If you're watching because you don't love me, welcome. As you may have heard, this summer there were allegations of a toxic work environment at our show. I take that very seriously and I want to say I am so sorry to the people who were affected. Actually, our girl Hedda also believes that Ellen's apology is just BS. Listen to her take. Wow. How did you take her apology at the weekend? It's full of you know what. It's, <laughs> it's, it's bogus. Yeah. It's bogus. Her apology is 16 years too late. You can't buy back all the lives that she destroyed, basically, because when you fire people for no reason, just because you don't like them, and you don't like them because they didn't do anything wrong, you just don't like their look, or maybe they're old, and they're older women, In the you know, I'm older than her. So she has no idea the effect when you let people go, how it affects their families when you're the sole provider of your family. Ellen should have just known better because who apologizes three times and after the third time, it's still not getting better. I mean, at that point, I don't think people are accepting your apology. And it reminds me, only seven years ago, Ellen was also apologizing on her show for a similar situation, talking about bullying and such and being a better person, but it doesn't seem like she's learned her lesson. That I, if it would be mean, if it would be mean spirited, when I don't ever want anyone to get hurt by what I'm saying. Because I think people, people should anyway. Um, and so it's just mean spirited. It's just mean to, and I don't think people realize it because they're so used to hearing a joke being mean spirited. They don't, but I had a chance to stop and look at it because I was the, I was the joke. And I think that needs to stop. And I think adults need to know that they're doing the same thing. It's not just kids. There are adults that are out there bullying and they need to be kind. Now let's switch gears and talk about our friend Hedda Muscat. As you guys know, she was one of the first people hired at The Ellen Show, and she has been speaking out against Ellen for the past few months. Hedda joined The Ellen Show back in 2003 as a producer tasked with booking human interest guests. So she would be the person who would look for those stories out there of those families that need help or those normal people who did something really great so Ellen could bring them on and give them a sponsored check from another company for, you know, 
$20,000 or something. So she had a pretty cool job. I mean, she was able to go and look for really dope stories to present to Ellen and be like, let's show these people on set. But she is not very fond of Ellen at all. What do you think of the news? Has this come as a shock? Hi, uh, no, not a shock at all. The uh, viewers have spoken. Her ratings have been in the toilet for a long, long time now. Her show has not been fun. It has not been interesting. She's not really, by the way, stepping down. The viewers fired her. Hedda also shared that when she would go and pitch these special guests to Ellen and present them to her, Ellen wouldn't pay attention. It would be extremely disinterested in the situation. So for me, I was there the first hire in 2003. I was brought on to book the human interest guests, not celebrities, but, you know, people that were newsbreakers. And when I would go into Pitch Ellen, who we have on the show today for our production meetings, she looked away. She showed no interest with any of the newsbreaking stories. She really showed uh, a despise for a lot of my people that we were uh, pitching to her, which is fine. It's a pitch. So I, I boo-hoo, I don't care about that. But we had to uh, walk on eggshells with her because when we would be pitching, her snide remarks would be, what am I going to talk to them about? I don't know. I have nothing to say. I don't know. So it, we would write the, you know, the whole outline for her, and then the guests would walk off feeling like crap. So it wasn't goodwill for the show. Uh, however, she loved kissing with all the celebrities and uh, she really was not in a position to interview the real people because she really couldn't carry a conversation with them. I definitely believe Hedda there. I feel like Ellen would be like, wait, what would I talk to them about? Like, they're just normal people out here and Ellen can't seem to relate to anything normal. I feel like she only really wants to talk to those big celebrities out there who will have her back when these things go down. Like Scooter Braun, who is a manager for Justin Bieber and Ariana Grande, he actually stood up for Ellen on Twitter and claims that her show wasn't going anywhere. At this point in July 2020, it wasn't known that her show was going to be cancelled, so there was still hope for Ellen. Katy Perry also tweeted out in support of Ellen and claiming that she is a great person and that she is sending loves and a hug to her good friend Ellen. But not all celebrities love Ellen, and there's a good reason why. So I'm going to take you guys back to the Dakota Johnson interview where she pretty much told off Ellen. If you guys don't remember what went down, Dakota Johnson was on Ellen's show and they were talking about her birthday party. So I guess Dakota had a birthday party in like 2019 or something and she didn't invite Ellen. So Ellen gave her a bunch of crap for that. How was the party? I wasn't invited. <laughs> Actually, no, that's not the truth, Ellen. You were invited. Last year, no, last time I was on the show, last year, you gave me a bunch of about not inviting you, but I didn't even know you wanted to be invited. Well then, Dakota had another birthday party and she gave her more crap for not inviting her this time around. But in fact, Dakota did invite her to her party, but Ellen didn't show up. But I did invite you and you didn't come, so. This time you invited me? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. How do you know? I don't think so. Ask everybody. <laughs> And it was a very awkward moment on set because I feel like Dakota was not backing down and she was kind of offended that Ellen is just trying to make it seem like Dakota is like not cool and not inviting her to her party when in fact when you gave her crap she decided to invite you and you chose to not show up. Well who doesn't want to be know... invited to a party? Well I didn't even know you liked me. <laughs> <laughs> of course I like you. You knew I liked you. I just had to mention that bit because I feel like Dakota went in on Ellen. And if Ellen's show wasn't being canceled, I don't think Dakota would ever be invited back. But you guys may have heard that just recently it has been announced that Ellen's show is no longer coming back. It's on its 19th season and Ellen claims when you're a creative person, you constantly need to be challenged. As great as this show is and as fun as it is, it's just not a challenge anymore. So we're 19 seasons in and you're just now getting bored with the show. It seems very convenient with everything that is going gone down and you know your ratings and especially have gone down that you are canceling your show and I feel like maybe you can attribute it to your cancellation rather than your lack of challenge because I feel like your three apologies that all flopped that was a pretty bad challenge that you couldn't overcome. Actually, as early as June 2020, people were talking about replacing Ellen, and they claimed that James Gordon would be a great fit. 
This is all just a rumor, and I don't believe that James Gordon is actually replacing Ellen, but as early as last summer, people were talking about her replacement. So to say that you're leaving because of a lack of challenge, I mean, I think we all were pretty much planning for you to go. There are also rumors going around that Tiffany Haddish might replace Ellen on her show. Some people believe this because Tiffany has actually filled in for Ellen before, and she did pretty well herself. Tiffany shared that she would entertain the idea of replacing Ellen, which could be a moment and would be really awesome to see her on stage. She claims that nothing has been made official, but she wouldn't mind following in Ellen's footsteps if that paycheck is big enough. Which I would hope if Tiffany was invited to replace Ellen, that she would get the same pay as Ellen because that's what she deserves. But I do want to remind you guys a little bit about Ellen's problematic behavior. So far, we talked about how she's like intimidating people. She, you know, doesn't do eye contact. She's got a very sensitive nose. Then we talked about those producers who have been enabled by her for years now, and she's allowed them to take advantage of multiple staffers on set. So problematic. But now I want to remind you guys of some of the other bizarre things she has done before. You guys may remember this interview between Ellen and Taylor Swift because it is extremely uncomfortable and I have a feeling that Ellen just doesn't care how her guest feels. She just wants to make a newsworthy moment. So Taylor was on her show to promote her new album, but the entire time she was there, Ellen antagonized her because of her romantic relationship. Everyone likes to joke about Taylor Swift and her relationships and dating boys and such, and honestly, it is so old. We don't have the same energy for the guys, but but Taylor Swift is being dragged through the mud. Anyways, she was asked by Ellen over and over again if she dates Zac Efron, which she has told her no, and she's getting visibly upset by it. I'm so happy to see you. Every time you're here, you make me very happy. You were here with your boyfriend, Zac Efron, last time. How's he doing? Um, we actually never dated. Yes, you did. So, how's he doing? I don't know. I haven't talked to him in a while, because we didn't date. Yes, you did. Why do you deny it? Because we didn't. Which song is about Zach on the new CD? Um, there's nothing really about Zach on the CD because we didn't, we didn't date. She also tried to make her play games about boys that she didn't want to because ringing a bell for these guys, it's going to start rumors and make headlines and Taylor doesn't want to be associated with all of these men. That's just society pushing it on her. We'll show pictures. I don't know if I'm going to do this. Yeah, you will. This so, is the one thing that I have. It's like the one shred of dignity that I have is uh, I know that... What do you mean one shred of dignity? You're just filled with gonna, dignity. You but, I, but people go and make guesses about it and the only thing that I have is like that one okay. card. Okay, hold it like you're going to ring it at some point. <laughs> Feel. All right. What do I, I don't know what I'm. You're supposed to ring. But what? I don't yeah. want to. I don't want to. All right, I'll ring. Because they'll send me angry emails. Here. I don't want to get I'll them. I'll hold it for you. <laughs> So I really hope if Tiffany or James Gordon or any of these people replace Ellen, they're not going to treat celebrities the same way as she does. Because multiple celebrities out there, I mean Justin Bieber, so many have been disrespected by Ellen. I was actually watching an old Ariana Grande interview where Ellen kept bothering Ariana with questions about Mac Miller. You can tell the entire time that Ariana Grande is so uncomfortable and she doesn't want to be answering these questions. So I don't understand where Ellen's skills went away, where she doesn't realize that these people don't want to answer the questions like body language 101 and that's how you stop celebrities from ever coming on your show ever again before we close out this video there's one more thing i want to show you guys and it's a clip that was pretty hard to track down on the internet because the ellen show has actually tried to remove it multiple times so pretty much ellen had a situation at her show where she had some of the guests go and pick one free item from the merchandise table. So I guess they all had a turn to go and pick an item, and during this time, they were being videotaped. There's actually one woman who saw two items that she wanted from the table, and she just picked one, and you know, even though she wanted that hat, she just picked the one, because that's what she was instructed to do. Well, Ellen actually rewarded that woman during the show for only taking one item, and gifted her the hat later on that she also wanted. Ellen also took this opportunity to call out another woman named Nancy. Well, Nancy was doing the same thing as all the other ladies, but she actually took an extra item for her sister. Supposedly, her sister couldn't make the show, and she just wanted to bring her an extra item. I get it, you know, you want to get another souvenir, but that's against the rules. And Ellen took this opportunity to expose her and embarrass her in front of the entire world. She not only called her out on camera for taking another item. <laughs> What's your My name? sister couldn't come, so that was her souvenir. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Sorry. a lot of people's sisters couldn't come. <laughs> 
which was already so embarrassing, and she even acknowledges that, but she also tried to make this woman go sit in another chair on stage in Ellen Jail. What's, what's your sister's name? Anna. All right, well, Anna got you in big trouble. Okay, I understand if it's all like poking fun at the situation, but this woman is embarrassed, and it's obviously not cool that she took an extra item. I get that, but why does Ellen just get off on these type of things? Just making people feel so less than or below her, making herself feel like she's God in the situation. Like, oh, I know you took two items, so now you're going to Ellen jail. It's just very bizarre behavior to me, and I think it speaks volumes to how Ellen DeGeneres operates. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. There was so much we went through when it comes to Ellen, and I know there's so much still out there. So if you wanna email me some information, feel free to do so. Or if you have any other video ideas for me, email me below, but I'm gonna go ahead and open a peel box item for you guys. Whew, this one is from Jessica, Jessica G, and she's located in the USA. So let's go ahead and open it. It's got like fragile written all over it, so I'm kind of nervous, and it said to open on this end. So let's see what happens, guys. If you ever want to send me a peel box item, I've got my address listed below in the description, but no pressure at all. Let's go ahead and see. Ooh, it smells really good in here, and oh, my name, my, what was I gonna say? My nasal, my, everything up here is just really wrong right now because my allergies are horrible. So let's go ahead and see what she sent me. Okay. Dear Sloan, I wanted to write you for the longest time, but I never know what to write about. Haha. Ha. I've been a subscriber for a long time and your videos helped me through a really hard time in my life, being in recovery from ED and oh my gosh, an addiction for a little over six months. And I couldn't be more excited for the future and just putting all the struggle behind me. Oh my gosh, congratulations, that's so special. At the beginning of quarantine, when I was first making the choice to get clean, and instantly knew I was gonna be binge watching your videos all that night. Something about the way you do commentary just keeps me so entertained, aw. Thank you for always giving a voice to people and stories and situations that might not have one of their own. You are a bright light, aw, that can never be dimmed. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm gonna cry. I hope you enjoyed the candles I created for you. I cannot express my gratitude for you enough. I'm not the most active on socials, but if you could share my father's GoFundMe page, he's trying to raise money for medical work. That would mean the world. He really deserves it. It's been really hard <gasps> getting donations with our family circle being so small. We kind of keep it to ourselves. Oh, that makes me so sad. I'm sending you all the positive vibes. Definitely go check out her father's um, GoFundMe guys below because we all want to, you know, support each other in this situation. And I will link everything below, including her Instagram and her Facebook. Thank you so much, Jessica. I love this. And I really hope that your dad um, gets that dental work he really needs. And we're here to support you. We're all family here. Um, let's see. Oh, he's almost halfway to his goal. Oh, that's great. To getting dentures so he can finally eat pain-free oh, and have the confidence back. Oh, I'm so sorry. That, like, is so special, too, because, you know, like, te having teeth and functional teeth is just such a, it's not only for, like, to show your smile, which is good for your well-being, but it's also just to eat. Like, not being able to eat, like, comfortably is such a, I don't know, such a privilege, or not a privilege, but just such a, I don't know, it's so important. So I really, really feel for you, and I'm going to be sending you a donation through your GoFundMe, so thank you. Um, the candles are 100% soy wax, so here's some information about the candles. Oh, I love that. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and go through these and check them out. I'm so excited. And thank you so much, Jessica, for sharing a bit about your father. I feel like um, I really want to be here to help, like, you know, bring awareness to that. So I'll definitely be doing, like, a swipe up and stuff because you never know, guys. Like, we all need – I just, like, looked out. I was like, oh, my gosh, look how beautiful this candle is. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it smells so amazing. This one smells like – literal sherbet and i love how it's got like little stones on it and flowers it's so pretty oh my gosh okay let's look at another one i'm so hyped so here is a oh ooh, okay so there's some paper on this one. Oh, so they have like little papers on top i see oh wow i love the little like crystals inside them oh my gosh this one oh this is what i smelt when i opened the box I don't know what flavor it is. It's like blue. It almost smells like a blue raspberry type flavor. Oh, it smells so good. Oh my gosh. The green one is a fresh grass scent. Oh, this is an island scent. Oh, and the deep, the deep blue is cherry. Deep blue is cherry. This one is fruity island. And the green one is grass, which I'm so excited because you guys are going to think I'm so weird, but 
I use grass body soap. Like, like it smells like a meadow. It's like from Target. It's like two dollars, but it's just like body soap that smells like grass, and I love it so much because I don't know why. I just love the smell of earth, even though I'm very allergic to the grass. So let's go ahead and take. Oh, this one's a big one now. Hold up, hold up. Oh, this is so cool. I love these. Hold up. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh my gosh, this one is so great. It smells like beautiful grass, like not the cheap grass. Not crabgrass. It smells like really good, beautiful grass. And I love the like wax detail with the leaves here. Like that is so creative. And I love how gorgeous these candles are. It's not too clear if you have a business for this, but like you definitely need a business because these candles, like look at them alone. They're they're very like iconic where if you saw this at someone's house, you'd be like, oh no, that's a Jessica candle. Like that's Jessica's candle because I've never seen a candle that looks like this. So thank you so much, Jessica. I really appreciate that. And guys, go check out her dad's GoFundMe. Even if we like, imagine if this view got like, if this video got like 50,000 views and we all sent $1, like that's probably way over his goal. And I, I'm just going to go and, and support her because, um, I know what I know it's like it's hard to ask for help guys nobody wants to ask for help financial help or anything like that and it takes courage to do that and thank you for sharing that bit of yourself because I I really feel like we need to help him so Thank you so much, Jessica. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching this video. Comment below what you think about everything. Um, what do you think about these candles though? And until next time, I will see you in a new video soon. Bye guys.